Hi guys, I'm Kasha. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee times discussing books. And today I bring you my wrap up of the Evil Athon and the November books that I read. It's coffee time. So November, I decided to host the Evil Athon, and I had a total of 10 prompts slash challenges and I had a lot of fun creating it and I'm hoping that next year it's going to be a lot more interactive, like I'm gonna have some live shows, I'm gonna have more stuff added to it. This year, I don't know, a lot of things are happening in 2020 and I didn't have the energy to um, really get into lives and all of that but that will come that will call my friends so that we can discuss weekly you know what we're reading how are we doing with the challenges and all of that I think that would be really good to bring some live shows into these readathon but nevertheless I had a lot of fun I did a lot of reading I vlogged it all I talked too much <laughs> um, and I ended up going through my whole TBR pile the only thing that I didn't get to is a couple of short stories from uh, two of the books that I had, but I'm gonna finish it now in December, so it's perfect. I am really happy with everything that I read. Um, if you're new to the channel, if you love horror, if you love books, please consider subscribing and also hit the notification bell. So normally in my channel, I like to rate books with coffee mugs and normally I do from the lowest rating to the highest but since these are all books that I read for a readathon I'm just gonna go through the challenges and let you know which books I read I read for each challenge and the rating that I gave them so the first challenge was endless night to read a book of 400 pages and for that I chose the group book that we had in case that somebody wanted to read this this month with us and that was the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix and I ended up giving this one 3.5 coffee mugs. Now this book took me through a real roller coaster. I started really really loving the book you know when you start reading a book and you know you're gonna give it at least four stars that's the feeling that I had. Then Towards the middle, I was a little bit unsure if I was enjoying it that much anymore and towards the ending I could feel the disappointment in me. So in the book we follow Patricia. She is this typical wife in a suburban neighborhood, you know, with her fake friends and she is really bored of her, you know, housewife, mother, um, wife life and she is looking for something you know to give her a little bit of thrill and she ends up joining a book club and um, then this new neighbor moves in and she starts suspecting that something's wrong with him that there is a deeper secret there and she gets in her head that this new neighbor seems to be a vampire and she brings this topic in the book club and that's kind of how our story starts um, what I was missing here in this book was characters with a lot more personality. Patricia is a woman that at the very beginning she's lost but she also doesn't have much personality and she's taking a lot of psychological abuse so disclaimer for that. And honestly most of the characters of this book were just a little bit bland, a little bit superficial um, which is part of why I was a little bit not enjoying it so much at some point you know I just got a little bit bored I guess of the characters and also even though this is supposed to be like a thriller with a little bit of horror in it it wasn't thrilling there is no like twists and turns and things that kept me like you know like worried for the characters or something that um there a twist came that I did not expect and wowed me or something like that However, I really enjoyed the writing. I think Grady Hendrix is excellent at writing books and it shows. Um, and I did enjoy the story in general. However, there were some decisions made towards the end that I was not so happy with. And it's just a personal opinion, I guess. Also, I felt the ending was very rushed and he gave us something a little bit stereotypical and like not really satisfying for me. 
Um, but yeah, I don't want to go into spoiler territory, just letting you know that. And also trigger warnings in this book or content warnings for um, predatory behavior, child abuse and rape. Challenge number two, Among the Missing, to read a dark thriller. And for this, I read The Runner Girls by Amy Engel. I think she is wonderful when it comes to write really intense family drama thrillers. And I gave this one for coffee mugs. Um, in this story, we follow Lane as, as she returns to Roanoke. She is currently living in the city and decides to go back to Roanoke, this farmland that she left when she was younger and she thought she would never have to return to but her cousin Allegra is missing and she would do anything for her cousin so she goes back um, and to her grandparents house to try to find out what happened to her and try to help the police investigate see what happened now this book is very slow paced the same happened with the other Amy Engel book that I read so I guess it's kind of like her style this is very character driven and the story is told from the perspective of Lane from the past and the present and it jumps back and forth but it's done in a way that it's super you know easy to follow and it also gives us snippets of the life of other Roanoke girls that are already deceased and no longer with us um, I really enjoyed the story and to follow the character of Lane and all her emotional roller coaster that she had to go through. However, this is a book with also heavy topics like abuse and incest and things like that. So, you know, just be aware of that if you are thinking of picking it up. Next was Bite to read a book about vampires. And for that, I read Let the Right One In. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the author's name. <laughs> sorry but I'm gonna butcher that and this is a book that was on my wish list for so long and I think I was always scared to pick it up because I had already watched the movie because it was a chunky book and translated and I was like I don't know but I am really glad that I picked it up because I ended up giving it 4.5 coffee mugs now this is a very unusual story of Oscar a young boy that is being bullied his father was an alcoholic that left him with his mom and he is having a really rough life when he meets this girl that comes out of the blue um, in the park in front of their apartment building and he starts this beautiful friendship with her now this little girl looks a bit weird she's very skinny she's barely wearing any clothes when they are like frozen temperatures and she is very athletic maybe too much like you know she's doing jumps and things that look a little bit not natural and she smells funny all of these things and Oscar doesn't really care he's just happy that he has found somebody that wants to be his friend and this girl Ellie she is a old vampire like you already know this from the very beginning or if you watch the movie and the interesting part here is that for her getting to know Oscar reminds her what it is to be a kid because she kind of has forgotten because she's been a kid for many years and they they start this beautiful relationship but we don't only follow them I love that the book also kind of depicts characters from that small town and their secrets and it was so great like the way that the author manages to describe this whole town and it doesn't get confusing at any time and all of the stories are interesting and at some point everything starts to come together absolutely loved it it's very atmospheric as well perfect for the winter time so yeah i'm super glad that i picked it up the next one is quake to read a book about a disaster natural disaster and i picked up wild girls by roy power so this is the story of a small kind of island in which there was this school of girls and after a weird virus outbreak that started in this island they are completely quarantined and any contact to the outer world and civilization is broken they do receive some kind of packages with food and meds you know occasionally so that they can survive 
but as time goes by they get less and less resources and this virus is causing their bodies to change in really gruesome ways and so it kind of tells the story of how they are surviving a couple of years after this virus outbreak now this book was so fast-paced so easy to read and i absolutely loved the topic but i ended up giving it only 3.5 coffee mugs the reason being is that the book was not exciting i didn't feel fear for the characters i was not like excited to see what was going to happen because in a way we are following the girls that have survived after a couple of years when they're already used to everything so there was nothing really extremely like exciting for me like you know what i mean like i mentioned on my vlogs i wish this book would have started like the day the girls go to the school and then when the virus outbreak started so that we would have time like to get to know the girls and then this virus starts and then people start dying and changing and it would have been like extra gruesome and it would have had more impact because you know the girls and you don't want them to you know to get hurt and the virus is spreading what's happening you know that kind of uncertainty and and fear i feel all of that is taken away by starting the story a couple of years after the disaster so i don't know i have mixed feelings about the book because i really enjoy the writing style um i enjoyed to hear about the girls but i was not a fan of um you know the the book starting in this kind of period of time because it took away so much potential from the story uh, but yeah I still really enjoyed it though next we have Island to read a story where a trip goes wrong and I read for this Death Can Wait by Evan Bond I read this on my Kindle and I gave it 3.5 coffee mugs now this was a story in which we are in the islands next to Brazil and um, there is this island called Isla de Lobo which means the island of the wolves and the people that live there are kind of people that had to rebel and become pirates because of poverty and so a lot of ships that go through there tend to disappear mysteriously and we follow a couple of friends two couples that are enjoying their holidays and it is time to return home so they decide that instead of taking the plane they will just you know go back home to florida with the boat that they own and so <laughs> when they're returning home in the boat of course there is a storm and they end up stranded in an island and that's when their survival story begins this book was you know it was a nice entertaining read with a lot of action-packed moments a lot of like deaths and blood and in that way it was satisfying however the characters were kind of super simple and you know this really typical characters with everything perfect and that kind of took away the fun a little bit because it didn't feel like they were real people in a way I don't know if that makes sense and also a lot of the things that happened were convenient for the story so I felt like a lot of things that happened were just convenient and not really realistic but like I said the whole kind of action and survival mode that went when they were in this island it was pretty satisfying and also this book kind of makes you think what would you do if you would be in this position because most of us don't even know like how to start a fire what kind of water we can drink if we would be stranded uh, because you cannot drink obviously seawater so it kind of like makes you think like dang what would I do like I have no skills <laughs> like I'm done if I end up stranded in an island for dreadful tales which was to read um, short horror stories I started three collection of short horror stories and I only finished one but the other two are nearly finished so those will be on my December wrap-up but the one that I completely finished was Local Hunts this is written by our fellow colleagues here on YouTube this is from horror booktubers and I really enjoyed it you have such a wide variety of stories you have a forest you have of course creatures you have a hellhound you have ghosts you have like legends from the 1700s like there is something for everybody I absolutely loved it and I don't know like knowing it's people that you follow or the you know videos you watched 
it's kind of like that little extra cherry on top now when it comes to the rating it's really hard to rate such a book because of course the ratings depending on the stories are very different but it's definitely a 3.5 to a 4 coffee mug rating for me so i really really enjoyed it and it's one that i would definitely recommend you guys to pick up next challenge was flesh to read a book about a creature for these i picked Hold Back the Tide by Melissa Salisbury. This is a 2020 release that I expected to like, but I didn't know how much I was gonna love this book, and I ended up giving it four coffee mugs. Now, this is probably one of my favorite YA horrors that I have read because it's not tropey, it's unexpected, and it's nothing like other YA horrors that I have read. So definitely one that I would recommend. So in this book we are following the story of Alba. She lives with her father in a cabin and the father is the Loch kind of master, like he protects it, takes care of it, and they live a little bit isolated from the small village. So these people from the village don't really like them because of past events and um, Alba has had enough of this life. She's not happy and she's kind of planning to run away however her plans for running away have to be put on hold when a threat comes to take the lives of people from the village and she decides to stay and help defeat these kind of danger this kind of threat that they get i don't want to go too much into detail i want to keep it vague because i think one of the best parts is not knowing exactly what that threat is going to be i was extremely surprised by the twists of the story there's a couple of twists that come and i really really enjoyed it it ended up being really dark and um i absolutely loved the danger threat in this story that i cannot tell you about i know it's mean but i don't want to spoil it for anybody and definitely one that surprised me positively and that i would recommend you guys to pick up next was no sanctuary to read a story of a couple of characters that are trapped somewhere and for that i chose the novella zero lives remaining by adam caesar and i gave this one only two coffee mugs because i felt like this story needed more pages i felt it was extremely rushed and the characters that they didn't even have time to explain themselves <laughs> it was just really rushed now i absolutely love the atmosphere of, of this book because we are in an arcade our characters are trapped inside with these like old arcade machines and there is seems to be a ghost attached to one of these machines um, that is coming for them so this pitch was something that i was extremely excited about but for some reason the story didn't really you know captivate me the characters didn't even have time to present themselves i think there were too many characters for such a short story and maybe you know i think this novella would have been one of those cases where more pages would have been really beneficial the next challenge was funland and i decided to pick up the book that inspired the challenge which is funland by richard Lehman, and i ended up giving this one four coffee mugs now this story started very slow paced and introducing a lot of characters like at the same time and i was struggling a little bit at the beginning to keep everybody separated in my head but then as the story progressed and i really started to get to know all the different characters i got really invested so if you get over those first like 100 150 pages and you're good to go and the ending was extremely, extremely rewarding. So we are following this small town in which there is this park that is all opposite from Disneyland. It's trashy, it's dirty, there's freaks in there, and it's very small. And this is based on a town that is basically close to the sea. We follow different groups of characters. On the one side, we have a group of teenagers that they suspect that people that are disappearing in this town are being killed or kidnapped by the homeless people and so they have kind of like this feud with the homeless and on the other hand we have the police department that are trying to stop some crimes are being committed in this town and everything revolves around this fun park you know this fun land and I have to say that at the beginning I was kind of 
expecting a little bit more like blood and action from the beginning but it does take its sweet time until you start seeing some blood <laughs> and even though there are two love stories in this book and one was a little bit too insta lovey for me i understand that it was needed for the story and like i said when we are getting to the end the book gets so intense and bloody and it gave me everything that i wanted and everything made sense <laughs> so definitely a book that i would recommend so if you're looking for a book that apart from horror it does have some elements of a good thriller i would recommend you to pick this one up now it is 500 pages but it's totally doable the last challenge was blood games and this is you know, your typical story in which a group of friends go to place x and start dying and for that i picked sanctum by marlene rouge um, this is the second book on the Asylum Trilogy and I picked it up hoping that actually a lot of, some people were gonna die in the book but it was very disappointing in that department um, and I gave it three coffee mugs. I still gave it a three because I do enjoy the writing. Um, it is an entertaining fast-paced story and I love that there are creepy pictures in between the pages. However, I do feel like this synopsis for the book was a little bit misleading since the synopsis mentions that our characters are going to be involved in a carnival and characters there and i think the only reason why this was done is because probably somebody found or the author found pictures about a carnival and they wanted to include them in this book no matter what and to be honest there's like maybe five pages that are really mentioning our characters inside of this carnival and that is it so that was very disappointing for me <laughs> but in this second book we follow the same main three characters that became friends in book one and they receive some strange messages and pictures and they decide to go and investigate and it takes them back to the old asylum from book one and um yeah you it's basically like a nice mystery you know that three friends are trying to resolve for me it was lacking because i didn't feel like it was exciting or thrilling at all like a lot of things were happening at some point but i was not i was not really caring much and at some point i just wanted to finish the book which is never a good sign so yeah sadly only three coffee mugs and because i had some time extra i read two novellas the first one is the malan witch by katherine cavendish and i gave this one three coffee mugs these was satisfying but it was very predictable and stereotypical in the way that it's a story that we've all heard before so it was like not really original but i would still recommend you to give it a read because it was an interesting creepy read about witches and in this story we follow um robin she's having a hard time with her life and she's trying to move on but she's stuck in her grief and so she decides to spend some time away from everything in her sister's new cottage and when she gets to this cottage and she gets to know people from the village she starts to hear stories about the people that used to live in that house and what had happened to them and so i really love the aspect of you know small town by the sea uh, this house that has a lot of history and witches but like I said even though I really you know enjoy the story I just felt like it was nothing new so that's why I only gave it three coffee mugs and the last thing that I read is a novella that if you like weird fiction if you like really weird stuff this one's for you <laughs> and that is Slaves to Gravity by Wesley Southard and Summer Cannon. I gave this one a 3.5 coffee mug rating and I'm gonna try to make this short so that I don't spoil anything but this is a story that combined horror with some family drama even some science fiction and it was fantastic like you didn't know what was going for you <laughs> um, and it was such an amazing adventure we are following um, this woman that after an accident she wakes up at the hospital she doesn't know what happened to her and she has had to have some like kind of brain surgery after her accident and she starts to notice that something in herself has changed and um, she it's kind of 
having some trouble adapting to this new life after the accident but that is just the beginning really you guys this is insane like it's pure insanity and at some points it was a little bit ridiculous <laughs> But I absolutely loved it. I just loved it because it was weird, it combined horror and science fiction, it was super entertaining and it brought like a new kind of interesting fresh concept. So yeah, definitely if you love weird stuff, check it out. Alright guys, so this is everything that I read for the evil a -thon. I am really happy and pleased with all of these reads. It's a lot of things that I read, some of the books were really chunky, so I am extremely happy that I finished all of it. And yeah, let me know down below, did you have fun, did you participate, what did you read, what was your favorite read from the evil a -thon? Let's talk about it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching you guys, please give the video a big thumbs up for support, and if you want to follow me on the social media, as always, links are down below and I hope to see you all in the next coffee time. Bye!